thanks for staying with us. While we await our guests on the Doen story, we're going to be taking another guest uh, to talk about a conference that's going to be happening tomorrow. And um, we have the First Lady of Kwara State, Ulufolake Abdul Razak. Good morning, Ma. Good morning. Good to be here. How are you doing today, Ma? I'm very good. And okay. it's nice to be on your program again. Yeah, thank you. So uh, we yeah, know that you're well having... Well done on all the topical issues, very important issues you've been speaking about. Oh, thank you so much. We know that you're having a conference tomorrow. Can you tell us exactly what this conference is about? Yes, uh, the, you know, Kwara State Government is having a conference, you know, to essentially bring to the fore the impact women can make when given, you know, fair and competitive chances to make an impact in society. You know, you know, the narrative in Kwara now is changing. Uh, the event will give women an opportunity, you know, to carve out a niche for themselves. So it's called the Kwara Women Conference. Uh, it's been hosted by myself and the governor, the governor in particular, you know, so, and we expect people from various walks of life, you know, because the governor believes that there should be no limit to the dream and aspirations of every woman and girl irrespective of their religion and sociocultural leanings. So we believe that the event with our retinue of speakers, you know, will give us the opportunity mm -hmm. and the avenue to inspire the average Kwara woman to leverage on the women-friendly initiatives of this administration mm -hmm. to chart progressive courses for themselves and be active participants in the processes of governance, uh, not only for the development of their media communities uh, but for the state and for the country at large. So this is putting Quara to the world. Mm. I hear the theme is cracking the glass ceiling. Why exactly did you pick this theme and what glass, uh, the ceiling, what ceiling are you cracking with this event? Well, uh, I'm sure you heard about all the women-friendly initiatives uh, of the administration. You heard about the 56.25% female uh, inclusion in cabinet done by the government. This is the first time anywhere in sub-Saharan Africa that that has happened. Mm. So that is definitely cracking the glass ceiling because you know normally they, they say that there's a glass ceiling for women. Mm. Uh, usually you know everybody thinks there's a bar to where you can achieve things and you can't go any further than that. But you know, this is to show that Kwara women have actually cracked that glass ceiling mm. with the help of the governor uh, and myself. You know, I, you know, we we do a lot of work to make sure that this is happening. You know, to promote women, mm. uh, the governor also appointed 50% women as permanent secretaries, and with a woman as the head of the civil service, mm. a woman as the head of the Kwara State Internal Revenue Service. Going further to you know, ensure that the trend of women inclusivity uh, is sustained. And uh, you know, this is going to happen tomorrow, whereby a bill will be introduced that gets women 35% representation and appointments. You know, mm. This is due to be signed by His Excellency. And this is a clear testament to the fact that women inclusion, when embraced, promotes development on all fronts. Um, his Excellency is committed to ensuring its sustenance through policies and legislative backing. So, you know, we talk about when you implement policies, uh, you, are, you are here today, but it's not a permanent position. You want to ensure that these forward thinking policies stand the test of time, you know, are sustainable. So how do you do that? You make sure you have legislative backing, get the legal people to be part of it, uh, make sure it is sold, it is, um, you know, um, made very, you know, the information is made accessible to all. Because right now, sometimes laws are passed, things are done, and the average man on the street is not aware. Mm. So you have to promote all these initiatives. And that's what we're doing in Quara. Okay. Conference to be at. Who and who are you expecting to, to grace this event? Well, uh, considering it's a women-friendly conference, so we expect uh, all Quara women of note and you know, who've achieved a lot uh, in their course of um, career and uh, cause of um, you know, all what they've been doing in their lives. 
And also, don't forget that the uh, government's leaning on social inclusion also means that we're talking about Kwara women at the grassroots as well. So while we have Kwara women at the top echelons of society who've achieved a lot, we're also going to have Kwara women at the grassroots. And these are the people who have benefited from the social investment programs uh, you know, that the government has put in place. I'm not sure if you're aware of what uh, we call in Kwara Owoishu. You know, that is the petty traders' money. money. And this has been given out to, it's been dispersed to so many people. And you would be shocked at how much 30,000 naira, what difference it can make in someone's life. You know, you, you also had what we call the Uwarubo, because you have a lot of women, that's for the elderly. You have a lot of women who are now elderly and are not really, you know, doing anything anymore. Where do they get any money from? This has transformed their lives. Mm. Soft loans were also given. And another loan, you know, was given to the mall stall owners during the NSARS campaign that lost, you know, some of their businesses. So we, we expect to see all these women. And then we are also going to be supported by women of refuge from all over Nigeria. I'm very grateful that some of my sisters, first ladies, will be supporting me, inclusive of the um, chair of the Nigerian Governor's Wives Forum, uh, Irimu BC Fire Me, and we have so many others also coming. I don't want to start listing names. We have people from uh, the um, you know business and banking sector. We have people from you know uh, all walks of life, and these women are to come here to inspire others mm. and tell their stories. So we really look forward to it. Yeah. Okay, so um, I want to. I always like when we do events that showcases women. Um, because we cannot, the, the, the economy at the grassroots level is run by women in the marketplace and women well educated, spearhead more education for everyone generally. So I'm happy this is going on, but you've mentioned that it's open to all women, but I'm, I want to find out if you're reaching out to all the universities, the school, the institutions within Kwara State to sort of maybe provide buses to bring in female students from secondary school and the university to come and be exposed to the knowledge that you'll be sharing. Is that already in the works? Is it open to any um, pupil from any of the universities to join? Well, if you know what has been going on in Kwara, you know that uh, the gov government is a very youthful, friendly government. We have an SSA who is 24. You know, we have the youngest commissioner in Nigeria at 27. Uh, recently, and she's now gone on to the UK to continue her studies. So, you know, the choir government has always been very youth friendly, and my office in particular has always taken on the youth. So the youth are definitely a core part of this event. We just had some town hall meetings, which, you know, the SSA youth engagements, um, you know, was able to put forward to the different senatorial districts in the state. And this brought a lot of youth together. And we continue to mobilize them. So don't worry, the youth will be here in large numbers because they continue to be the mainstay of you know, my own policies. So we lost you somewhere when you were mm. trying to explain um, what the administration has done for the youths. Can you yes. wrap up on that here? OK, so you know, I said the administration has been very youth-oriented and youth-friendly. Most of these social investment programs are actually you know, aimed at the youth. My office as well and uh, my GK People Support Center have been primarily focused on the youth. The skills acquisition programs that we give are primarily focused on the youth. So the youth, youth are very engaged in this activity. And I told you that we have a, a, a SSA youth engagement who's like 24 years old. So she's a youth herself and is actively engaging the youth. So the youth are really for front and center of this whole thing. So, you know, I'd just like to give a, a few keynotes of uh, what we expect to gain, uh, you know, going forward from this, um, uh, from this, you know, we're very, very hopeful and, um, you know, that this uh, bill that, you know, will ensure that 35% inclusivity, we're very excited by this and we can't wait for it to be passed. Uh, I would like to remind you that, uh, you know, the governor signed the VAP law on the 15th of October 2020. Wow. And a lot Amazing. of this can be said to be part well of the advocacies done. of the First Ladies. Mm. 
um, we all got together and you know became voices of uh, a pressure group really mm. and got the governors to you know do a state of emergency on gender-based violence and we're very happy that since june of last year from 14 states we now have about 30 states that have signed the VAP law, including Quara, and Quara is really rushing to domesticate it. Mm. So all these, this, this unprecedented focus, you know, will ensure that women continue to find their voices. And then the the focus on, you know, basic education and primary health care uh, in the state, you know, to ease the burden of women and the girl child, uh, that is very, very important. The policy on basic ed education is helping to take girl child off the street and reducing the number of out-of-school children by entrenching the development of this class of people. So, you know, Quara often used to be referred to as a civil service state, mm -hmm. but that narrative is changing really rapidly. And, um, you know, this uh, engagement is endearing. Businesses and business owners, you know, we've had a lot of interest from conglomerates and different countries in coming to Quara now. So it's no longer shrouded in mystery. Yeah? We, so Quara is now, you know, right. It's Quara to the world now. That's what, uh, that's what we say. So we've become the first state in sub-Saharan Africa to have 56.25 female cabinet. Wow. Uh, many key parastatals and offices are headed by women. Wow. For the first time, the administration appointed over 50% female permanent secretaries in the state civil service. You know, this administration has prioritized women empowerment through various programs, like I said, such as the Quara Social Investment Program, which focuses on women at the lowest rung of the economy. Tens of thousands of women have enjoyed financial inclusion in this process. Wow. And the unprecedented focus on basic education and primary health care in the state will ease the burden uh, of the women and girl child. And this policy is really, really gaining trend. I mean, we're going to start now on um, another round of immunizations and, and things like that. All right, we're Brad. happy that uh, things like polio have been eradicated. Mm. So I think you will see that women are front and center of yes. all these initiatives of government. And the governor, you know, if I, I, I would like to really shed a light on Whoa. why he <laughs> has this. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, we need this, to. Uh, we need you to wrap up now. Um, I think we'll find time to yes. bring you back to come and share After the everything program. you have what? been doing what? for women yes, in your administration. Will. But we have to go right now. Thank you so much for being on the Thank show. Thank you for we're having look, me. We're looking it's forward to, to the back. conference. Yes, that's happening tomorrow. Yes, please, we'd Thank like you. some of you to come and join us. Huh? Okay, <laughs> we'll, we'll First try. Flight. <laughs> All right, we'll be speaking with Quara. the First Lady of Quara State, Olufolake Razak. And we'll be taking a teeny winning break when we come back. We move on to our Doen story. Stay with us. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.